By the way, I have an announcement. Well, we're moving on to new business. James Norton. Yeah, time. Speak. Uh, I booked Letterman for November 1st, so any fans in the area that want to come to the show, try to get tickets for November 1st. November 1st. I believe it's a Wednesday night, my first Letterman appearance. November 1st. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know what ask. celebrity friend I'm going to make that night. I yeah, who's going to be on? With. I don't know. Let's find out. Jim Norton, Letterman, November 1st. I don't That's know. Awesome. They haven't told me yet. I'll tell yeah, you, one person, psyched. it better not be. Who? Oh. That, uh, what's her name there, Johansson, Scarlett Johansson. I don't care about her either because I've already met her. I want Shut to... up. You don't care about how you already met her. Why would I, what would I have Shut to up. talk to her about? Shut up. You remember what? me? I bothered you for a picture. Ooh, the swell of your bosoms the, is lovely. The second time you see her, you could have maybe brought up, hey, uh, I uh, saw your uh, pictures in Allure magazine. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure. Just beautiful pictures. I'm sure pictures. I would say it like with that loving tilt in my voice. And she would, uh, she would be, oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you are you ready for Letterman tonight? Cheek to cheek. Um, oh, tonight. Oh, it is. Tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See? That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Don't last night after the abominable hard. Hard uh, rock broadcast. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! We all no, no, see, see, don't get, don't confuse the people. We haven't done the 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 Halloween party yet. We're doing it in the morning here. See, we're still we're we're doing it. It's <laughs> see, happening right then, now. Oh, right, 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 right. right. No, you're as a matter of right. fact, if you're listening and you're in the New York area, show up. You'll get in <laughs> right. right now. We're partying hard at the Hard Rock Cafe. And the and the password when the bouncer tries to say there's no party is to say something really racist and push past them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but tonight, Letterman. That's really exciting for Jim Norton. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's hope it's good. I think it'll go well. I You're a so funny too. man, and I have all the faith in the world. I had to email my song. They wanted to know what song I want to walk out to. Oh, what song you I don't know. I just said anything Sabbath, preferably Sabbath Iron Sabbath. Man. I don't want to see Paul Schaefer doing Iron Man. What a dweeb I'm going to feel like. Yeah, because the band does it. Yeah. That might be a little weird. Yeah. Isn't Iron Man a little kind of too popular? You should pick something a little no, more. No, but you want people to know what it is, because after five seconds, like you, people, nobody will recognize any of it, especially with a big band. Yeah, yeah. Playing like a big band sound. sound. Like Dancing Queen? Everyone knows that. Oh, well, that's kind of nice, but who could concentrate <laughs> on the jokes all that music? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I went to Letterman with Jim yesterday. Yeah, we, Jimmy was on Letterman. We haven't even been able to talk about uh, Jim Norton being on David Letterman last night. Absolutely killed. I was happy. He killed. Thank you for coming. It was nice to have some friends. There. Little friends, are you in the little dressing room? Yeah, open, Lindsay. It was kind of nice to go to Letterman and not have the pressure of going out there. <laughs> it was a lot more yeah, fun. Huh? Just sitting around, like with my feet up, going ah. Don't no pressure. It was no pressure whatsoever, and Jimmy looked great. His set was great. Um, one observation, unfortunately, I got to I got to say it on the show. I didn't realize how sick Jimmy really is with his uh, celebrity photos. <laughs> how could you not? It's just he's always no, been this no. bad. No, he took it to a new level. New level? New effing level last night. <laughs> oh, boy. Just what when I you... thought I've seen it all with Jim Norton. I've what been backstage do? at Metallica where we had to sit around almost two hours after the show waiting for the perfect time to go up to the guys to get the photo. What'd you do? I've, I've told that story many, many times. Dude, you know, upstairs in the dressing rooms and stuff. Of course, I know. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice that we can all relate to, yeah. to the Letterman uh, green rooms and the... And uh, and the upstairs portion and stuff. Sure. So Another there's place Jimmy. like the back of my hand. <laughs> there's Jimmy. Uh -huh. He's in his room. His suit is hanging up. He's you know waiting for makeup, and uh, we're all there excited for little Jimmy Norton. All he cares about is getting a freaking picture with Gary Sinise. Gary was, Sinise, pretty cool. Yeah. Who was also on the show. Yeah, it's pretty cool that Gary Sinise was on, and it's pretty cool to try to get a picture with Gary Sinise. But he's about ready to go on Letterman himself. He doesn't even care about his... I mean, in my mind, how I saw it, he doesn't even care that he's going on Letterman. All he cares about is getting his picture with Gary Sinise. It's a photo op. He's got people going all the way downstairs to five or six uh, <laughs> floors to, oh to, to search out where Gary is because he's not on the same level as Jim Norton. And, uh, you know, uh, check makeup. Is he down there? Just, get, you know, call me, and I'll go down immediately, and we'll get the picture done before he goes because I know when he goes on Letterman, as soon as he's done, he's leaving. So we got to get it before. Oh, like Jesus. just, And I'm like, oh, my God. This would be all right if we're just kind of hanging out at an event, but it's Jim Norton. He's getting ready to go on Letterman, and this is all he cares about is getting a picture with Gary Sinise. Yeah, man. I was like, because the dressing rooms, people don't know, it's a little different than Leno. When you go to the Tonight Show, you walk, it's all on one level. Mm -hmm. You go to, uh, there's dressing room one, dressing room two, and uh, the stage is there. And, and, then, and then the entrance to the stage is between them, really. Uh, upstairs is where the bands go. They have an, a bigger dressing room area upstairs, like a, a, one little flight of steps right above you for bands, because like, they know the bands have like 12, 15 people in them. Yeah. But it's all very close together. You're literally a three-second walk 
from the stage entrance. So it's a different setup, whereas at Letterman, you take an elevator up to the sixth floor, because in New York, everything goes up for real estate. You can't have it all spread out. Yep. And all willy-nilly. Sprawling. So upstairs are the dressing rooms. There's there's dressing rooms one and two, I think, right? And Or three. There's three dressing rooms, and Sinise was in one, I was in the middle one, and then Joanne Carson was in the last one. Oh, he was up there for a little while? No, but there was a dressing room that was his. Oh, yeah, but he never he never was up there because that would have made it so much easier for everybody yeah, involved. Of so I finally uh, I finally got I got Joanne Carson. She was very nice. And then I got. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Johnny Carson's old uh, old uh, wife was there. And, oh, right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she was right next door to Jim Norton and, and Jimmy got that picture taken care of. He got that one out of the way. See, he was going for the trifecta. He wanted Joanne Carson. He wanted Gary Sinise and he wanted David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck. <laughs> well, it, it, uh, I'll say that Sinise I finally got after his segment. You did? How did you get that? Well, I, I, I knew his segment. Jonathan, my manager, was down there talking to him for like 10 minutes in the dressing room. He was like, Why did I? I was texting Pete for you to come down. So I came down after his segment and right outside the green room. I actually talked to him for a few minutes, took a couple pictures. What did you say to him? I talked to him about what a brilliant actor I thought he was. And he was very nice, man. He was very, very yeah. conversational. And uh, I asked him how it was to, to play McMurphy and Cuckoo's Nest on, on Broadway. And then I was talking. I saw about that me. show. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, he said it was really, really good. Intense. And I asked him about my hands, of course. The same nonsense you hear on the air. That's what I did. <laughs> and he was very funny. He's like, uh, I'm like, he's like, I don't go through my hands either. He's like, uh, don't put them in your pockets. Like, I can't put them in my pockets. Sometimes I find a wall to lean on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Gary Sinise has to talk about after he does Letterman. He has to explain to some middle from Jersey yeah. what to do with his hands in the I middle just, of the scene. I just love that every actor now has to let us in on on that little secret and and give you advice on what to do with your hands. Right. <laughs> and so I do the set and I come off. <laughs> wait, and, wait, wait oh. but you got the picture with Gary Sinise. Oh yeah, yeah, I got a couple of them. He was Did you explain cool. that? Yeah, yeah, I said okay. they took a couple pictures. I want yeah. to see that. And, and, um, but this was literally minutes before he's going on. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like, yeah. He's not just trying to get his thoughts together. It was like he couldn't do anything until he got that photo. And thank God he got it before he went on, because I think he was able to just now clear his mind and have the set that he did, which was awesome. I mean, that's a credit to Jimmy, because, uh, you know, he's done these shows before, and he could just go out and, and do things like that. Meanwhile, me and you nah. are in the dressing room looking at the monitor going, nah. eh, eh, just got, nah. like obsessing about when we're going Sorry, on. Sorry, man, you're giving him no? way too much credit. No, oh, okay. no it's a sickness. It's well, a sickness. Part of it is... Part uh, he's willing to just destroy his whole set on Letterman <laughs> to get pictures. It's a sickness. You're letting him off the hook here. Well, to be honest, there is a part <laughs> yes, of Yes, he is a professional, but... It's pushing. It's almost pushing away the magnitude of the event. It's like you are, in a way, going on television in front of what, however many millions of people, mm. and you don't want to look at it in those terms. And so I, it, there are times where I'm grateful for that that stupid part of me. To obsess on something. Because it, it, cause it's really what I was thinking of, and I'm not, I knew my set was down. I had my set, so I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to panic about that, so I start focusing on the other stuff a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, and Letterman was the picture I really wanted, of course. But oh wow, and that was the that was the greatest thing ever. Jim gets off, like he does his set. The show ends. Jimmy was at the end of the show, and he gets off stage, goes right into that green room, right to the right there. Yeah. And we're all like, just so happy for Jim. Like Jim, you killed. You looked great. We're saying it was the best he's ever looked on TV. Everything was I, we really thought was perfect. Okay, and. Uh, not even a smile on Jim's face. He's like, we got to get a picture with Letterman. I mean, uh, he just no. got off stage. Dude, seconds. Seconds. Got to get a picture with Letterman. And so he starts asking the staff, and, and they're all like, ah, well, ah, The What Dave does, Leno's different. Leno comes in the dressing room before the show. He talks to you and hangs with you. Letterman doesn't do any of that. He's just a different guy, man. He, he's just and, he, and everyone knows yeah. that. That's just, He's just... He's just it's I guess it's a yeah. He doesn't he doesn't want to be bothered. Um, and right after the show, his ritual is he comes off the stage, goes right up the steps, and right back to the offices. It's just what he does. They actually clear the hallway, clear the hallway, and it, I don't know. The, I got the uh, I, I I was I was assuming that people aren't allowed to look at him. I was under the assumption that there's uh, really yeah, there's a ritual, and uh, part of it is to just let him. A walk immediately from the stage back to the office. He probably has some kind of ritual that he's done every night so, for this many years. And, so and, and Jimmy was pushing it. Jimmy was pushing I it. I didn't care, though. It's like, you know J what? I'm not afraid of him. And not to, it, to be a yeah, jerk, I know. Jimmy was pushing one of the girls, and she's like, I, I couldn't even ask him. I, I can't even so, ask well, him. Then you know what? And I, it's obvious she's been working for the show for a while. And she wants to continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, when he's – yeah, but well, you know what? For and, her guest to say, I would like a photo with the host, she, I don't know. I just don't find that to be too crazy. I don't find a guest saying, 
hi, I was just on your show. I would like a photo with you because I enjoy, I enjoy getting photos and I was just on your show. I would like a photo. I don't think that's crazy. It's not like, hey, look, my uncle helped you move back in 88. Can I have a photo? I think once you perform on somebody's show, to say, can I have a photo with you three minutes later is appropriate. I completely agree with you. <laughs> um, and when he walked off, well, I, I actually, uh, can I just add yeah, really yeah, yeah. fast? So then, uh, we're, yeah, we're doing the right thing because we're, we're there for Jimmy, so we're mingling. Right at the bottom of the stairs there? Yeah. We're just mingling like, all right, well, she's not going to ask, but ah, maybe he'll just, you know, he'll he'll walk right by us and there'll, there'll be an opportunity. Hey, uh, Mr. Letterman, can we get a quick picture, right? And I think she she caught on to us. She's like, uh, you guys, could you kind of clear the hall? Oh. Jimmy was just on the show and, and on TV, they're like buddy, buddy at the end, like Jimmy, great set. And if you saw the appearance, there's the show pretty much ends with uh, Dave and Jimmy on stage together. Looking like pals, right? Sure. It is a completely different thing as soon as that show's over because now she's like kind of pushing us. Like, could you guys clear the hallway? He's about ready to come walking There's through the here. There's the protocol. And I don't want to lose my job. So we, we push back to the elevator. But Jimmy's kind of pretty much still, you know, at the bottom of the stairs because yeah, he's not going to give up where, that please, easily. Where's please, the camera at this point? Where's the camera? Out of my agent oh, ready to go. He had it ready, ready to, to go. go. Ready to go. Yeah. So Letterman walks out. He has no suit jacket on. He took it off. And, um... I nodded at him. He said, you know, hey, Jim, thanks for coming. Great job. He said, great set. Yeah, he complimented Yeah, yeah. He was, but the, and, we shook, and we shook hands, but as, he said it as he was walking up the steps. And I knew I could have asked him for a photo. That probably would have been the oh, optimum actually, time right there. And I know he would have stopped. He wouldn't have said no. No yeah. one. But it would have been awkward for everybody involved. It would have been awkward for, for the other people there and for the, the staffer. So I didn't. Because um, I knew I was like, I asked someone to screen cap. But I was depressed and annoyed at myself. Had Pete and I been the only ones there, I absolutely Absolutely would have asked him. Yeah. But it was just, I knew he had, like, a, you could tell by the way he was walking. He wasn't trying to be a dick. He wasn't being rude. He goes off and he walks up the steps. That's what he does. Right. Um, this wasn't about rudeness. This was about maybe he just does, I don't know what his thing is, but he's obviously a success. So it works. Um, so he shook my hand and said, thanks, great job. And he, as he was walking up the steps. So who knows? Maybe people bug him after the show and ask for a second. And who knows what people do after all yeah. these years. So I didn't ask him. I'm like, if they ever have me back, I certainly will. Um, but I, I saw, I said on a, a MySpace thing, so I'm going to be on Letterman tonight, but I didn't get a picture, so could somebody screen cap me? Because it's HD now TV, so I was like, somebody could screen cap me and him at the end in a good one and send it to me, like, Off a, it, a large photo. So yeah, I get the HD, 8 by 10. get the HD version, because it, it mm -hmm. was amazing how good you looked on the HD, uh, Jimmy. So I'll get it. I mean, I'm not panic-stricken, because I know I'll get, like, a, probably a really cool one of me and him on yeah. the other shaking hand, which is fine. Yeah. But it was just really weird, the set there, compared to the Tonight Show, they're just different... And uh, Letterman's writers were really cool. The two guys, they're like, I guess, yeah. pretty legendary in the business. Stangle Brothers, uh, Eric and Justin, and they came up afterwards. They were really cool. Yeah, they were really, they were really cool nice. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. They were like, wanted to get on the show for over a year. They were very nice dudes. So. I, I I'm also, very glad I did it. I also get the impression that the staff doesn't really know um, where he goes right after the show's over. Like, he's going back to the offices, but they couldn't follow him if, if, if they wanted to. They don't really know how he gets there. It's he like, just kind of disappears kinda, into a hidden wall. <laughs> one of the people backstage was like, oh, he's already gone into the catacombs. Yeah. They call it the catacombs. Like, it's just like this, this, like... I just pictured Dave with a torch. Yeah. Like, he pulls a book on a wall, <laughs> right. and the wall spins, and he goes in with a torch. It's like a maze of hallways and stuff that get... Get to this, like, just, I don't know, the, I guess the office space, whatever. Cause yeah. He's legendary for the hours he puts in. He doesn't he doesn't leave there till really late at night. I thought he just did the show and, you know, was out of there immediate, immediately, but no. He's involved with probably the whole editing oh, process yeah, and everything else, and he doesn't leave until what? The show's yeah. starting? I just don't understand how everybody is so afraid of, like, you know, it's, it's almost like I, I would never be hesitant to say, to, and I guess because you guys are different, but... I never understood people who like won't walk up to someone and say so and so who's on your show wants to take a photo. It's just bizarre to me. Ask uh, Iraq. Anybody would be how uh, he would feel. Right. <laughs> Iraq. Oh, he would ask. He would ask Opie uh, that somebody wants to take a picture if if he knew that Opie's ritual was to not take pictures. Um, if the guy was a, <laughs> no, not only would he, he ask that, but then he'd ask, oh, could he sign the picture for the charity auction, which no one knows where that money's going. <laughs> um, the Iraq Foundation. Right. Uh, yeah, I think he would because if, if the guy was a guest on the show, yes, yeah, I agree. All right, we got to take a break. We went real late with the first break. When yeah, we get back, we we'll give you a little taste of Jim Norton on David Letterman last nice. night. Nice. Just a taste, just a taste.
Another break. When we get back, we got to get to the uh, the appearance on Letterman, Jimmy. Oh, I don't I know. I, by I the way, see a little Jimmy. We got some uh, some clips of Jimmy on David Letterman last night. We're going to get to. I had to read the whack bag post. Somebody told me he did some of that. In the, the shower joke on Leno. Oh, good imitation. Yeah, that's angry. Uh, a angry speaking guy who types <laughs> a lot, but he hurt his hand. Um, and I didn't. I did the couch joke with the face wash. Two, two totally different bits. Yeah. So please, and I trip over one of the. I'm so annoyed at myself. Stop. Don't be annoyed. Oh, You're in. Angel. All right, let's uh, go to the phone and say hi to Clark in Sacramento. Clark, what's up? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, hello, hey Clark. There. Clark. <laughs> Clark. Um, hey, this is mostly for Jimmy. Great show last night on Letterman. Thank you. And uh, question, are you still coming to Sacramento? Yeah, I pushed that until the end of January, but I will be there. Because I'm uh, doing a Bob Saget show in Vegas, before, uh, the old Sacramento week. Thank you, sir. I will be there. All right, let's say hi to Justin on Long Island. Justin, what's up? Hey, what's going on? I'm trying to get in touch with the boy in studio voted Sweetest Smile. Oh, I was voted. The Wilkins boy was supposed to win that year, but then that mysterious fire started in his room and he didn't win anything. He won Boy Most Likely to Cry at the Sight of a Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> that could sting. Oh, man. Jim, I just want to tell you, man, we were up and about me at the show. You were looking like a million bucks. No homo, bro. You looked phenomenal. Oh, thank you. By the way, thank you to Angela and Joseph Abu. They, the, the same guys that dressed Opie and Anthony uh, dressed me. And because you guys look good, I, I, I believe Thanks, me, sir. there was a great look you guys had. And I'm, I'm like, uh, I went there and they took very good care of me. She even took me to Bloomingdale's because they didn't have my size. And, and it was a Joseph Abood show, but they had my size. And she took me there and, and, and they actually Joseph Abood bought it me at Bloomingdale's. Not the guy himself. I don't know if right. he's alive or he could be 200 and dead. <laughs> but the clothes were from them and thank you. All right, very good. They looked oh, great. Oh, shoot, is he still there? Maybe I. Are you still there, bro? Ah, screw him. He had something else. Sorry about that. <laughs> Here's Jim Norton on Letterman last night. Just a little taste. From New York, the greatest. Oh, okay. This is always fun to hear, though. The Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight from CSI New York, Gary Sinise, Joanne Carson, and comedian Jim Norton. Norton. Bob Schaefer. CBS Orchestra. And now, president of the Rachel Ray Fan Club, Dave Letterman. That's pretty cool. And, and by the way, the, pl the plug, people ask me, why did you mention Opie and Anthony and the plug? Here was my intro. I was about to say, uh, you can hear yeah, me five days, here. five days a week on the Opie and Anthony show, and this November 10th will be appearing at the Hammerstein Bowl. I had to yeah. plug that. Uh, only allowed one plug. Why is one that? One plug. No idea. That was the rule, and they got back to me. Yeah. And so they tried to even, but we couldn't. And I had to plug the day because I had to get. You know, oh, no. that's why that you was, do you the have show. To, is to you don't have to but it was just Jimmy. annoying that uh, it was like, come on, man, it's a CBS thing too. Oh, and they were just on the show. You guys, come on. Yeah, you right, could just I mean, say from the Opie and Anthony show, Jim Norton. There was a way to do it where it wouldn't be. It's only. It would only be another second. Yeah, a second and a half, maybe. Well, that's hard. That's a second and a half. I got to tell you, Gary Sinise was just god-awful. Was he? He's this huge actor, as we all know, and he was such a bore. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Someone has to say it. I don't know what they ended up using, because it looked like even David was like, oh, I got to make something out of this. Oh, mm. he was, I don't know what it was. And then in the middle of his interview, he's like rubbing his ear. Obsessively, really hard. I think I've seen him do that before. You have seen him do wow, that? Wow, yeah, because I, I think I, I think I've seen him on uh, on Leno, and yeah, he he kept rubbing his ear or doing something. It might be some nervous thing. I'm sure. Maybe he is. just doesn't like doing talk shows. And then Joanne Carson, who was on the show with you, she was a babbling ass. Yeah, she was a Someone has to say, a freaking Jimmy saved uh, the show last night. I'm telling you. You know, obviously Letterman or, you know, we know for a fact, too, you're not going to have a good show every day yeah. or every night in Letterman's case. Just want a good average. But Gary Sinise didn't give him anything. He no. looked nervous to, just to be, uh, you know, on that couch with Letterman. No energy whatsoever. Rubbing his ear like crazy. What was Joanna Carson doing? Oh, just babbling and babbling. How about Johnny? Babbling. Yeah, but she's there plugging some uh, Sherman Capote stuff she's raffling off. And Letterman, Sherman Letterman Capote I, I, stuff. I watched Letterman. Because Sinise was not a great interview. I mean, the bottom line is... He's, he's it had an nothing actor. to do with Letterman, by no, the way. No, no, not at all. Because, like, Letterman was, like, leading him down the path, holding his hand, but it was weird. Gary Sinise was, like, <laughs> looked uncomfortable in his own skin. A and, lot of actors. And he's an amazing actor. A lot of actors, man. That's why they don't do talk shows. You never see De Niro, Pacino, Nicholson, so many... Keitel. 
they just a they don't want their real personality shown because mm. they, they like to be who they are. But a lot of these guys are painfully shy. I mean, they really they they're just they're horribly shy and they're just not good in, in situations like that. But if you wow. gave Sinise a script, being themselves, yeah, they can't be themselves. On that stage in a script, he, he could do anything. He could probably walk out naked and do Shakespeare without. You know, or can I pick a worse example? But you understand oh, what I mean. I'm picturing that. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of these guys are really shy, so they're not they're not they're not great interviews. But Letterman, I, I kind of watched his interviewing skills, and he is a good interviewer, man. Like he just he made the most out of that that you could have. He laughed in the right places. He kind of you know I guess that's what you have to do mm -hmm. to have a talk show. Why am yeah. I saying the obvious? Oh, yeah. You know, well, it's good. He sat in front of the desk. He didn't fall over. He was <laughs> able to you know talk. I'm an ass. It's a talk show. I just talk sometimes, and I wonder, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> we all do that. I, oh, my God. I'm a bliver, blithering idiot. <laughs> it's the worst when you say I'm, I'm a saying. blithering idiot, and you say blithering. Blithering, I know. <laughs> I stopped myself. <laughs> I knew I had a second shot at it. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. People, people think I'm an expert on this topic. I don't know. Crap. <laughs> just make it up as you go along, and hopefully they'll just nod their heads out there. It sounded good right up until that point. <laughs> right. Now I'm babbling. <laughs> All right. Here's uh, some more Jim Norton on Letterman. Our uh, next guest is a uh, very funny gentleman, and as a matter of fact, on November 10th, he will be uh, headlining at the Hammerstein Ballroom as part of the New York Comedy Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Jim Norton. Jim. I'm clapping. How cool is that? Black nice. Sabbath music. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, how are you? Yeah. Good. I actually, uh, I'm really feeling good. I'm embarking on a new relationship, uh, which is kind of nice. But you ever do something to bond with somebody, and it feels right, but when you look back on it, you kind of feel like a creep? <laughs> like you're in the car, and a song comes on, so you turn the volume way up, and you go, listen to the words. <laughs> Like she's going to hear the song lyrics and kind of identify them with you and learn something like, hey, I never knew you had the eye of the tiger. Hey, was that Paul Schaefer going, ah? There was one, the thing I Paul Schaefer was enjoying your set. There, there was one thing I, I, I think I heard him laughing at, like, specifically, and I think it was, uh, I want to say something to do with the racial material. I, I don't Ooh. remember. Um, really? and by the way, right after this, I made a quick edit, and I'm so, you know how we obsess over the imperfections, and I tripped on the setup for the GPS joke, and it was here's yeah. why, because I, I, I had made a quick edit in my head on the fly, and I was just like, you're running through, like, is that going to second move. anything later? Yeah, but you really think, like, did I tie that in with anything? You have to, you're like, blah, 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 your head's just doing that, so that's why I was preoccupied in the setup of this next joke, which is why I can, you know, maybe people didn't notice, but I certainly did. Now we all will. <laughs> you know, no, that's right, you should. It was a flub. Nothing uh, horrible. More from Jim Norton on Letterman. It's interesting. It's interesting as a white comedian. Sometimes when you say the word race, how there was always a few white people. Huh? Oh, did they get through the GPS line? I don't know. We were just getting uh, some highlights for you, Jimmy. Oh, okay. We're going to play the whole set over at XM. Okay. And then the CBS people will call us and say, stop. Don't yep. do that. Yeah. Please don't do that. <laughs> but we'll do it. So we'll do the whole set on XM today. It's interesting. It's interesting as a white comedian. Sometimes when you say the word race, how there was always a few white people in the audience that are like, oh, we're not with him. Not sure where he's going with this. <laughs> Yet if a black comedian mentions race, the same white people are like, oh, hon, this is going to be a doozy. <laughs> Wonder what we did now. <laughs> uh, we are guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> White people have a very odd guilt complex. We really do, man. We really feel bad all the time, and we don't have to. Most of us don't have to. Um, all right, look, if you're over 65 and you live in Alabama, okay. <laughs> Chances are you owe a few apologies. <laughs> oh, By the way, nice my friend, break. that is a great line. That is a great line. A ballsy joke, too. For a uh, talk show. Yeah, I'm, I don't say it's ballsy, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's just it's pretty ballsy, dude. You could have gone with the, like all pretty safe stuff. Yeah, there was some edgy. You, know, you get some ra you get racial material. If you're a white guy and you do racial material like that, especially when it's black white, that's a ballsy move. I give you credit, my friend. And he wasn't getting. And he the, pulled it off. He wasn't over. getting the uh from no, the audience. He was no, getting big uh, laughs. Yeah, yeah. They were nice. Jimmy's uncomfortable. Do that at the Apollo. Why are you uncomfortable? I'm annoyed Jimmy? that the CBS lawyers would have a problem with playing that. I'm real. I'm beyond. Oh no, I just kind of threw that out there. 
I think it would be fu- <laughs> I just no. I think there. it would be really funny if we went over to satellite to right. XM and played it and received a cease and desist from our own company. <laughs> I just kind of threw it out there, Jimmy. I don't. I don't know for sure. I think that would be really hysterical. I'm all about creating controversy. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> I didn't mean to bum you out. I really don't know. When you read the newspapers, controversial shock jock, Opie and Anthony, he's the Opie part. <laughs> it's controversial. I really don't know for sure, Jim. All right, uh, here's another highlight from last night's Letterman. Appearance. Appearance. Another line of thinking I never understood is homophobia. I don't understand people who don't like gay people. Um, and I'm not gay. I'm not. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to judge a person by a few dozen incidents. <laughs> I mean, it's late. I'm in a rest area. Someone goes, Psst, what am I going to be rude? I'm amazed. I got to tell you. Damn, I'm amazed damn. Letterman like approved this entire set because it's so edgy. Well, none of it was a uh, uh, FCC violation. None of it was even, it was all innuendo. I mean, none of it was like, you know, FCC. Psst, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm like, you know, rest area. Psst, none of it. Yeah. Was. It's so, it's the idea behind it. Is so dirty. Yeah. But you, the way it's presented is it's squeaky clean. Uh, and, and this is actually, this is honestly, God, the material is not that edgy at all. It's, it's it literally, it's just that most comics on. on I think it's TV edgy. So milk toast. Yeah. That anything that's rem- not, not even that's not milk toast appears. Edgy. That's yep. what I'm trying to get yeah. at. Uh, as far as Letterman and comics go, this is very edgy. Yeah, for for, for TV, I guess, but for Letterman, yeah, especially. And finally, uh, one more here before we take a break. Colin Quinn's here. He's going to join the program in a few minutes. And we got your Borat uh, song. Oh. I have a uh, gay friend helping me decorate my apartment, which I know is stereotypical. But look, I talked to my straight friends. They're just worthless. <laughs> and we had an odd moment. We're in a furniture store. And my friend sees a very good-looking blonde-haired guy. And he tells me the guy's name. And he goes, uh, we used to work out at the same gym. I had him in the shower. <laughs> And I really wished he wasn't comfortable enough with me to blurt that out. <laughs> Yet I still found myself going, what happened? <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Uh, Ed Norton, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't think Letterman liked me, to be honest with you. Why? Just a vibe. Really? Yeah, man. How, how could he tell just, that? I don't know. You just know. Really? Mm-hmm. You felt that? Mm-hmm. When he walked over? You just, you just, you just feel it. He wow. Was, he was polite. He wasn't. You just, you know, it's like walking into a room and you get like a, that weird danger sense. You just, you a little weird. I would think. He probably could give two craps about you. <laughs> no, but it, yeah, but in the sense, like, I, yeah, I guess I probably. That's I think, how I, think that's I felt. It's like okay, he's been through this a thousand. I don't even more than a thousand. I don't know how many times he's brought guests out and up? I don't even think he can make a decision unless they've done the show ten times. Yeah, it's just another guy. All right, whatever you want. And maybe you're right. Maybe it's like he forgets about you as soon as you leave. Like in a split <laughs> second in his head, he's like, ah, this guy's all right, or ah, this guy's not quite all right. But I don't think there's this. Real big swing with him with, wow, I really like this guy, or, oh, I don't like this guy. I think he's just like, all right, what time is it? Time to go into the catacombs. I'm out. And how could anyone not love you, Jimmy? Uh, just a vibe. Did you smile at him? I said hi when I walked out, yeah. No, a smile? Because if you smiled at him, there's no way he could resist, because you were voted boy with uh, what, 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 what were you voted well what year are you talking about <laughs> what year boy who's boy most likely to brighten your day with a smile yes and boy with the sweetest smile in the neighborhood <laughs> in the neighborhood after that wilkins boy had his accident all right we're gonna have a break police said they found an accelerant in the room <laughs> <laughs> they did still looking at that one <laughs> First, let me just say, Jim Norton, brilliant, and really, what you guys said, doing that kind of material, you know, it's it's not easy, and it was really great to see somebody. You said it was a man set. It was a man set, and uh, I can't, I didn't vouch for the outfit. (laughs) What was wrong with the outfit? The fact that it was an outfit. (laughs) (laughs) 
that he was so proud. You could just see him getting out of the cab or the car, trying not to wrinkle himself. <laughs> All dressed up with mummy. Oh, you'd be disgusted. I actually brought it in a separate over-the-shoulder bag. Oh, I had them it steam back, it. It was a back-to-school outfit. <laughs> could you steam this, please? But it was a great set. Thank you. Oh. But, um, yeah, that was some following party. I think. Well, what did you say about Letterman, though, too? Oh, I was saying that Letterman definitely, uh, Anthony nailed it. He did, could care less about anybody. I was in there once a couple of years ago, and for some reason I made him laugh. I said something sarcastic on the air. Afterwards, the producer go, Letterman really liked you. He liked you. And I go, great. Well, you know, I live two blocks away from the show, so if you ever have a fallout, call. Oh, you really? You could do. Hey, guys, sure. So I just picture myself being like the new <laughs> Tony Randall, getting all these free $600 <laughs> paychecks and nailing them. Never just getting the me. phone call. That no. was three years ago. They've never called me once. <laughs> and you live right there. Not once. <laughs> in case Not someone, once. The school says you've been there. Yeah, in case someone cancels, they could call right. Colin Quinn. That's he exactly. would be there like that. Yeah, I got like a little material. I had, a, I had it all planned out in my head. Never call once, so. Oh. Now, now, Jim's like, what does it have to do with me? No, I know exactly what it has to do with me. No matter how good you think you do, he just forgets you before he's he up those steps. Yeah, either way, yeah. Yeah, well, I think someone, it's just another show under his belt. But someone in his yeah. position, uh, what is it going to take for him to remember you? Because he's, he's seen it, it all. Like to, to do 10 appearances, to be that person that keeps coming back on the show uh, time and time again. Then he'll he'll know who you are. And even but, then, you know, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. He's he's dead. Even on the breaks, he just sits there and looks out numbly at the audience. In the scheme of things, it doesn't matter. He's, he's Dave. He's done this for years. He's got his way of doing it, and that's it. Well, you know. Well, you're gonna fault the you're gonna fault the man. Those. You're gonna fault the man. Don't screw up our December appearance. <laughs> I am gonna fault. <laughs> you're gonna fault him. He's well, a genius. He's been on the air doing this for how many years? <laughs> Come on, yeah. longer than all of them put together. Par Carson, right? No, no well, I don't know about of that. Of course not. But I'll say that. What's he? Twenty years now? Over twenty years? Who cares? What do you think? I follow his damn career. Let's move on. <laughs> well, I don't know. You might know.